today, the very short session is about the uh, use of fibres and particularly from a sustainability aspect. Now, I'm going to cover the, the functional aspects as well. But the use of fibres in concrete and how that will impact this audience here, but in the broader industry sector of how fibres are used. And that will hopefully give you some other ideas that might be applicable in your designs. So Rioco, Rioco was formed ultimately about 40 years ago. It was called Bly's Steel Wool, and it used to manufacture, obviously, steel wool. And it was the first, people, uh, first company in Australia to make reinforcing fibres because the owner, who's still the current owner, um, was looking for a way to reuse the scraps from the steel wool production. And he came up with the idea of repurposing them into steel fibre for reinforcing concrete. It goes back to the 60s originally, at least in this country and further back elsewhere. But ultimately, we are all being challenged to do more with less. We are, we are being asked to create more innovative, creative designs, more flexible designs, using less materials, with less, lesser carbon footprint, with lesser cost and faster build times. And if you want to keep trying to achieve that with the same ways you've always designed and built, you're going to be looking like my friend here at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. But it, that is the ultimate question is how do we do more, achieve more, create new things with less and less of our current resources? The facts on fibre reinforcing, I'll explain what fibre reinforcing is very shortly. It's a global market of back in 2017 when life was a very much simpler and much less complicated than it is today. It was a US $2 billion market globally. This is not new technology. It's growing as as more and more organisations realise the flexibility of fibre and as the increasing cost of steel uh, in both the materials and the labour sense starts to make other solutions more economical and the drive for faster build times. Typically, about 20% of projects in Europe and North America will use fibre in some aspect. In Australia, it's at a very low penetration of about 2%. We are much uh, less creative in general terms of building systems in this country. And we've also had some big steel companies that have helped make sure standards stuck around for good old fashioned steel. As I mentioned, steel fibres began life in this country anyway as an off a new way of repurposing uh, scrap from steel wool production. Now, these days you've got steel fibres for other applications and you've also got polymer synthetic fibres. And they are a horses for courses activity. Lifting the bar on our design and thinking process allows us to use fibre and move away from some traditional easy to use systems of using reinforcing mesh and bar, which I know I did my engineering degree 30 years ago, and we actually all received a copy of the various steel design standards so we could design steel slabs and structural beams with steel. And there are so many people who are so familiar with that from the engineering community through into the concreters and the form workers. They've been using steel for 30, 40, 50 years and they don't necessarily want to change. Fibre does require you to lift the bar and allows you to access a whole bunch of benefits in the whole thing. So what are fibres? They are very small, sometimes measuring in the microns in terms of diameters, very small individual discrete segments that might be 12 millimetres long, 19 millimetres long, 60 millimetres long, and sometimes in the very fine fibre, you'll have a half a medium of them in a cubic metre of concrete. The first advantage they have from a sustainability point of view is they're mixed in with the concrete at the batching plant. They turn up on site already done. There is no extra truck movements, no extra loading movements, no shipping steel from all around the world, literally if it comes to Australia, that's driving a, a CO2 carbon footprint usage. Steel production actually accounts for about seven to nine percent of the CO2 production um, globally. So if you're able to use an alternative, and yes, the polymer ones do have an oil base, a fossil fuel base, but it does look like the areas are much less a CO2 footprint in producing them, you can have that impact on reducing the CO2 footprint of the project from the steel itself and the transportation. Fibres are um, originally used in mud bricks back when in straw back in 2000 years ago, and they distribute the load in a three dimensional matrix rather than two dimensional matrix of traditional steel. Overall, 
it should reduce result in a lower total cost to the project is usually an attractive option. And it's one of the significant barriers to using sustainable materials is often a case that actually the cost is higher. You save cost on the overall net number of materials, usually. You certainly avoid all the steel fixing labour, I'll touch that on it shortly, and the safety issues. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't have the transport. If you've got a large project, you might spend a week or two, 50, 60 or 100 truck movements, bringing mesh in and laying it on site. So, pictures of what the fibre is. There are people who may have heard of fibres, but they usually have only dealt with one type of fibre. So on the left of your screen, you've got the microfibers. That's the white looking material that looks like fairy floss. Very, very fine. That's really not used for much in the way of structural strength. It's really about being able to control surface cracking. And there's a very specific application that we've had a number of people use those microfibers for. And that's when people are doing a renovation or a house construction where they want to have a polished concrete floor. And that floor will be polished up, lacquered, and you don't want to have the micro cracking you'll often see in concrete. And you can go see it in most of your garages. We'll have some small, very fine cracks on the surface in the garage, probably the driveway as well. And the micro fibers will eliminate that and allow you to have that lovely polished finish without any of those small uh, shrinkage cracks on them. The black fibre there, that's one of our own proprietary macro fibres. That's also a synthetic fibre. That's one of the structural ones. So that's often used in uh, slabs for factories, precast elements. And it has a level of strength, well and truly suited for any residential application, used in gutters, driveways, uh, stormwater systems. But there are limits, like most things. And the top right is um, steel fibres. That's individual fibres that are actually glued together. They will break up inside the cement mixer. And that's for the really high strength applications. That's for when you've got a large factory slab, you might have cranes well beyond what you need in the residential environment. But a commercial environment, it can be easily used. It's often used in mines. And uh, we've supplied a number of commercial um, projects with very high loads for um, equipment maintenance sheds. I'm gonna show you a photo of that shortly and you do need the strength. Now, yes, it is steel. It is more cost effective than using traditional mesh and bar because you use less of it. The three-dimensional aspect of the way it is distributed in the mix and the labor savings mean it is cheaper. Next one, so labor saving. All of that steel mesh had to be trucked into suck with a driver, with fuel, with craneage, and then laid out by hand. So there is a genuine carbon footprint for the transport that is eliminated. You're losing, using less steel when the cement trucks turn up. Whether the cement truck has 55 kilos or 30 kilos per cubic meter of fiber in there, it's really incidental to the carbon footprint of the cement truck. But all that steel is significant. You, on a large factory site, you might spend a week or two weeks hand laying all the steel, and we've got that uh, penetration for a sewer pipe of some form coming through. Any uh, cut arounds have to be done. They're done by hand. It's dangerous in terms of cuts, scratches, and they can be quite deep lacerations off one of basically razor blades on the edges of steel. It's manually put into place and tied off. It's expensive and it's slow. Using fiber, that reinforcing is almost all eliminated. I say almost because you may still need some steel around columns and other areas, but you can form and pour and bring the truck straight in. And that saves a significant amount of cost and a significant level of the carbon footprint of the site can be eliminated. So labor savings, a real part. If we can make any sort of sustainable solution, the lower cost solution, we are on a winner. We avoid that, that hesitation to buy that comes up when the sustainable solution is a little bit more expensive than the traditional solution. So labour saving is a big driver in all this. This next slide's a playground in Melbourne, which currently with the current restrictions will all be locked off. And what that is, is you put a, a 3D 
shape that's there for all the mounds around the trees and the colours are there. And if you didn't have some sort of reinforcing in there, you'd have uh, it would, would the concrete would fracture and you wouldn't keep the shape. Now that is a earthen mound with concrete with fibre in it and with the uh, fall protection rub up over the top of it. Now that ends up being impossible to do with traditional mesh. You have to cut it all by hand, it wouldn't work. So this gives people flexibility about the shapes you can create using fibre when you need to. Think of driveways, think of retaining walls, think of other more exotic shapes that mesh becomes even more expensive if you've got a hand trip. I mentioned strength before. Okay, that is in Savage River in Tasmania. It's a maintenance workshop from mine. That slab is over a hill and far away and trucking in mesh would be horrific and was horrific. One of the attractions of fibre was eliminating those transport difficulties, let alone the car on footprint. And you'll see that's a fairly decent sized Tonka toy. Um, that slab has about 50 kilos per cubic metre of steel fibre in there. So if anyone's got any concerns about strength, that's a fairly good photo of um, the applications there. We, last year, we did a similar project for a similar product um, in Singleton, in one of the mines up there. Tunnels, if you're in the um, East Link Tunnel, you are surrounded by a whole bunch of our fibre. Um, there's fibres all through the new Westgate Tunnel. When it eventually gets built, there's fibres in the Clem Hill Tunnel, Clem Jones Tunnel in Brisbane. There's fibres in the North Connects Tunnel in Sydney. Well-proven technology. Again, you can see the unusual shape. Okay, it's a circle, but doing that in mesh is very difficult or much harder than it needs to be. Fibres can also be used to extend life. Um, if this is an asphalt intersection. Now, if you can double the length, the lifespan of a, of a product, be it a tunnel, be it a roadway, you change the carbon footprint of that project. If your bridge can last 100 years instead of 50, then all the energy put into the concrete is spread over a longer period when you calculate your carbon footprint calculation. A lot of the polymer fibres, the polymer fibres we use have an additive, antioxidant additive that gives them a 100-year design life. That's a requirement for New South Wales roads and big roads. So durability is higher when you use fibre than it is when you use steel. All right, I have two minutes to go. Here's a picture of the kitchen. Polished floors, great application for the microfibers. There's a number of builders in Victoria who buy a couple of bags at a time from us. It's relatively cheap in the scheme of the project. It's very cheap. And that gives them that perfect surface. Pathways and driveways. This is your classic front driveway concrete crack near me where I stay in Sydney. We can eliminate that. On the right-hand side is a walkway, cycleway in uh, Perth where the fibres are there and it doesn't crack. That is your, on the left-hand side, your classic driveway crack for your brand new renovation or home. You just don't want to see that. And the use of the microfibres can eliminate that. Residential. We are working with a number of um, people to work out how we put fibres into a residential slab, which is traditionally a waffle pod construction. Um, and we are working with how we can use void formers and so on to eliminate the mesh over the residential slab. I'm not going to be able to answer any chat questions there. I'll pop onto them afterwards. Uh, you see there a pathway. You will see their guttering and the stormwater system. There's fibre throughout all of those in many, many subdivisions. Much, much faster and much more durable. Okay, working with fibre. First thing you do is you don't just write on the drawer and use some fibre because it won't happen. It's a structural engineering product and we work with the structural engineers to do all of that. There's often multiple solutions possible. We have our own in-house structural engineer. We have our own design tool that we've worked on that correlates the standards to the test results and we'll give that to structural engineers and help them work through how to use it to use our fibres. We can even certify the design if that's needed. But talk to us in the early stages of a project and we can help get you the right solution so it's going to last and the most cost-effective solution. We have about a dozen fibres in our range and there is an overlap in performance. So 13000 Texo, rioco.com.au, or get us via the BDAA. Um, Chris and Sarah Jane will be more than happy to pass on the referral to us. 
and we'd love to have a chat to you about your projects. Over to you, Chris. I'll unshare my much. Thanks very much, Jason. Look, we have one of our young skaters out there, Mr. John Hatch, asking if it would be appropriate to be able to use in skate parks. Yes. Absolutely. Skate parks are a great application. That'd be perfect. Might, you might need to get in. We'll get. We'll put you in contact with John. I know yep. he might be out there on his skateboard somewhere listening in. So, John, I hope we answered that question for you. Got another one. Can it be implemented on polished concrete? Yes. So that, that, that was the photo I showed of the kitchen. They wanted to right. get into the micro cracking of beers, so the polished surface was going to be perfect. I think importantly as well is that it can be used in shot creep, um, which we have used on projects for ourselves, yeah. um, because to try to actually, I, I guess, fix the steel to a undulating surface is not easy. And yeah. when you can shot creep and you've got the fibres in there, it's a much uh, Some I, of the level I, I crossing guess. upgrades in uh, Melbourne have our, our fibres in the shot creek. Um, the Eureka Gold Mine and two other mines in Broken Hill also use it for underground shot creek reinforcement. Uh, someone's asked for a timeline on residential solution. So, <laughs> uh, Next week, as soon as I can find a builder to tie in with me on the void form of trials. The structural so engineering out there would like to be a it's a willingness for application. Yeah. Perfect. Um, can it be used on pools? Pools, yes. Yeah, again, that's one area we'd love to work with some people on uh, getting some more case studies on. Okay, another question is um, a specific, uh, concrete coverage. Um, do steel fibres address the concrete coverage? We have the minimum concrete coverage over the steel reinforcement. Yeah, that's one we probably have to look at the application. For instance, if it's in a marine environment, we wouldn't recommend a steel fibre. All right. Um, in, it, the the fibres will be mixed entirely into the concrete, so some will be near the surface. So, so it's not like you have a traditional coverage you have over mesh. Okay. Um, what's the availability in rural areas? How quick's your truck? <laughs> So, <laughs> very very seriously, we're, ship, we're shipping all over, predominantly the East Coast, but into South Australia. Our stuff's in Roxby Downs Mine. Our stuff's in Broken Hill, Ballarat, um, Mudgee, various rural applications. Have truck, we'll travel. Uh, another question is, can it be used in residential footings and piers? Yes. Yeah, it can. Yeah, we've just got to work with the structural engineers, and particularly the builders can be a little bit reluctant in residential. Commercial, it's very widely used. Okay. And another question is, with the fibres, how do they work this out? Do they contact the concrete suppliers and say we need the fibres or are they? What, what would be the right process? Right process is to talk to us first because it's got to be designed in. The end purchaser is the concrete batching plant but and they will follow what you put on your drawings, but your structural engineers will need to have uh, talk to us to get the design of the right fibre and the right dosage rate. So make it the most cost-effective solution because you can over-design with this product as you can with anything. And Jason, so members can then send off drawings to you um, to give, or I guess to Texo to give an input into how fibres can be introduced in place of steel mesh. That's exactly what we do. We ask people, send us your structural drawing. We'll have our structural engineer talk to their structural engineer and we'll come back with a recommended solution. And we, we might give you a couple of options depending on your preferences are, well are, and, and how it can be done. Perfect. Jason, thank you very much for your presentation.